so this PKI is a basically a set of set of services and a set of let's say components and with what these services do they issue certificates they issue slash manage certificates digital certificates so what are these digital certificates a very important security artifact that makes the whole web secure web really work what are what is a digital certificate so the main the main goal of certificates is to establish trust so when you go to https websites and you get the green lock that's it you you trust that website you can deal with it you can submit to it uh, like your own personal information or financial information like credit card details so and to for that entity that website for example to get that green lock it must have a certificate and this certificate is basically some trusted third party giving uh, giving uh, kind of some assurance to the visitor of this website saying oh we have verified the and uh, the identity of this entity and we can assure you this is this identity is a genuine one it's not a, a fake one uh, so how do we go ahead and get certificates how do we get certificates on the web uh, no, first of all, what's this th third party, what do we call them? Yes, Certificate Authority, CAs, Certificate Authorities. So there are dozens of well-known, well-established Certificate Authorities. Uh, what you go, you go there and you say, um, for example, here, the minimum, here is my domain. They will ask you what is your evidence. They will do a, some check to make sure the domain belongs to you. And then once they uh, once they verify this, they give you a certificate. What are the main elements of this certificate? Not public key. Not private key. Private key? No, not private key. Private key is something secret. You never reveal to even the certificate authority. So private key is not part of the digital certificate. No. Private key is something you keep really private. So what do we find in a digital certificate? Definitely a public key. What else? The, the validity period. Very good. And some information about the entity. Like for example, if it is for QU, you will find a Qatar University name and maybe the, the domain name. Yes, a mi minimum is the domain name, maybe some, some information about the entity. And then, more importantly, what you find in a, in a digital certificate? Typically, in a certificate or an ID, what you will find, typically? Of course, some information about, uh, about the entity holding the certificate or the, uh, the ID, let's say. What else do we find? Typically, in our IDs. Yes, there is some ID number, very good. So certificates will have an, uh, an identifier. What else is there? Very good, the signature. The signature of whom? That's not as important. What is what is more important? The signature of the... Yes, of the certificate authority. So if we look at our Qatar uh, Qatari ID, for example, in the back you will find here some signature of of MOI, like Director of General Directorates and Passports. So, very important. That's the role of the Certificate Authority. They tell you that, yes, this public key belongs to this entity. They put it together in one document, and what they will do with, with, this, with this certificate document they will sign it. How they will sign it? But with their public key. Like the with, with, their private private key. with their private key. Yes. Remember public key cryptography? We have public key and private key. Now, so basically when you go to certificate authority, you go there, you ask for certificate, they tell you who you are, and they will uh, ask you to provide some evidence of your identity. 
maybe if your company you provide them your domain name certificates that your dom the domain belongs to you certificates maybe of a business registration number or business registration document they go ahead a couple of hours or days depending on the maybe let's say a couple of days they will verify that all this information is correct and genuine and then they will issue you the certificate. The certificate will have basic information about the entity, the public key, and all the whole thing is one document that gets signed. And the signature is basically, uh, how do we generate the signature? Technically, we have seen this. How is the signature generated? The, uh, the, doc the document. Yes, very good. So we hash the document. So we, we go ahead and hash the digital certificate document, and then? Then we encrypt. Very good. We encrypt it using the CA private key. This is what certificate is. And then we take the certificate plus the digital signature of the CA. That's basically your digital certificate. And for this service, then you will pay some of them. Eight hundred, seven hundred dollars per year. Okay. Now, once you visit a, a secure website, what happens? We discussed this. This is just a quick review. Once you visit a secure website, what what the browser will do? Well, the browser will decrypt the digital certificates. No, first of all, it will get the digital certificates from where? From the authority. No, no, just from the web server. So what, what happened is the CA is when they give you the digital certificates, what you do with it, you go and install it in your web server. You go and install it in your web server. And then when people visit your website, they will get the digital certificates. They will get the digital certificates from the server because we don't want these CAs to be the bottleneck. Remember, the, the web has billions of websites or millions of registered websites with with uh, digital certificates. We don't want these CAs to be the bottleneck. So we get, where we get the digital certificates from? From, from the server, from the website and stuff. And then once, we, once the browser downloads digital certificates, what does it do? So first is to check the validity period. If it expired, خلاص, this is the useless certificate. The browser will tell you this is an untrusted website because the digital certificate has expired. Now, second thing, if it's not expired, they hash the digital certificate and they decrypt the hash code. Yes, they will do verification of any digital signature. You know how we verify digital signatures. If we want to verify digital signature, we take the original message that was signed by the whoever was from the origin they take that document, in this case, the digital certificate. The browser will hash it. It will provide a hash. And then they will take the signature associated with the digital certificate. And what they will do with it? Decrypt it with the public key. Decrypt it to the public key of whom? The CA. The CA public key. They will decrypt the digital signature associated with the digital certificate using the CA public key. They will get the hash. And then they will compare the browser will compare the hash generated from the digital certificate with the hash decrypted from the digital set, the digital signature associated with the digital certificate. If they match, then the, valid, then the, the certificate is valid. If they, if they don't match, then the certificate is madrug. The certificate is not, is not genuine. And the browser will warn you you can go to this website at your own risk. You don't get the green lock because the digital certificate is invalid. Unless she wants to establish her identity and to, to, to allow others to trust her. So what she will do, she will go to, uh, she will go to an authority. Okay, she will go to a certificate authority and ask for a digital certificate. She will provide her public key and some information about her, and the, the certificate authority will verify her identity and then issue her a digital certificate signed by the certificate authority. Um, it has some information about the, 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 the owner of the digital certificate and their public key. Okay? Now, 
So what happened, as I explained, uh, once somebody visits the website of this, of this uh, entity that has the certificate, the browser, will, as I explained, it downloads the certificate and verifies, verifies three things. One is the validity. Two is the, that verified using the digital signature. And then three, it's, it verifies what is known as the revocation list. I will explain this shortly. So, so what do we find in a digital certificate? This is what we find. This is, these are the elements of digital certificate. Public key of the owner of the digital certificate, some information about the digital certificate owner, and then the CA digital signature. The CA will sign the, this digital certificate. Um, now, all, like the infrastructure out there on the web that allows us to issue, to get certificates, that allows us to manage certificates, this set of components, we call them the public key infrastructure. And this public key infrastructure, the main, the main elements of it, of course, is the CA. One of the main elements of this public key infrastructure is the certificate authority. So what is the role of the certificate authority? Is to issue certificates. The other thing is, uh, let's say, let's say uh, a company, for some reason, they lost the private key associated with the certificate, or the private key was hacked. So what they will do? What do you think they should do? Sorry. So before you issue new certificates, if you if you lo if you lost your credit card or your credit cards were stolen. Very good. You first deactivate your previous certificate. Or in the case of credit card, before first you call your bank immediately and you cancel the other current credit card and you ask them to issue you a new credit card. In this case, you go to the CA and you do what is known as you revoke. You revoke you revoke the certificate. Okay? So you tell them, please make the certificate invalid. Now, what happens is, now whenever somebody, uh, let's say, managed to, let's say, um, let's say now the browser, when the browser, let's say, they, they go to a website where the certificate is already revoked. Uh, let me give you an analogy uh, of the driving. Remember, like, these crazy drivers, you might be, they might have a license, yes, and they will be driving and they will uh, do a lot of uh, fines. They get lots of fines, lots of tickets for speeding, for uh, not inspecting the red light and so on. And they keep losing these points until their license is cancelled. Not expired, cancelled. It becomes revoked. So when, when the police pull them out or they will stop them some, in the future, after their license is expired. So they might show them the license. The license is genuine. It is a genuine license. It is not expired. But the police will still take it, maybe go to their car and check it in their system. So the same thing happened here. So when the browser downloads this, the certificate, it checks the validity from date to date. You get a tip. It is still not expired. It will check the digital signature using the CA public key. The digital certificate is authentic. And then it checks the revocation list. It asks the CA, can you please tell me if this certificate is still valid? It's not revoked. It has not been canceled. If, the, if, it, gets a, a valid, uh, it, if it gets an OK, then the certificate is valid. So it's a really three steps checks. Check the validity of the dates, check the validity of the signature, and then check that the certificate has not been revoked. So the CA maintains a list of certificates that are revoked. And browsers can ask, or anybody can ask the certificate authority, uh, given the certificate identifier, whether the certificate is still valid or it has been revoked. So uh, a certificate that has a valid 
not expired yet with the valid signature can still be revoked. So you, there is a third step that gets checked. So all these uh, technologies and these components and these uh, policies to issue and revoke certificates together, we call them the public key infrastructure. Okay, there's one more thing to highlight here. This public key infrastructure has so many standards out there. So a format, a standard format for a certificate. So, you know, because certificates need to be understood by all browsers, by all servers, they need to have a standard format. So the way we format the certificates, what are the fields of the certificates? What, uh, what are the... Imagine the certificate has many attributes. What are the names of those attributes? Those attributes must be standardized. Otherwise, you might call it the issuer ID. I might call it the issuer uh, identifier. You might call it, uh, let's say, the, uh, the certificate owner. I will call it the certificate uh, request. So uh, because we have many CAs, we have many browsers, we have many servers, we have to standardize the format. And what is the standard format that certificates use? This standard format is called X509 uh, certificate format. And this is what we typically find in a, in a certificate. So we find common name of the organization owning the certificate, like just, let's say Qatar University, for example, the domain name, like qu.edu.qa. Typically, most organizations, when they buy or they request the certificates, they they buy what is known as a wild card certificate. They buy certificates for all the subdomains will be the same certificate. So when they buy, you can say star.edu.qa. Uh, yes, .qa. So they can use it for all. Like, yes. So when you go ahead and buy it, most of the, most of the time people buy this wildcard certificate. Uh, this is the validity date, as I, as I explained. This is the issuer name or organization. This is the CA. What are some examples of CAs? Sorry? DigiCert, yes, DigiCert, very, uh, yes, cheap one. Okay, very sign, there is GoDaddy, there are so many. You can just do Wikipedia, look up, you can, you can get, you can see it. What's another important element of a certificate, as I explained before? Very important is the public key. The public key of whom? Sorry? Of the organization, thank you. Of the owner of the certificate. And then another important element of the certificate is the issuer signature. This is super important. Digital certi certificates without the CA signature has no value. The, what gives the trust, what, what makes other trust the certificate is what? Is the CA signature. Without the CA signature, that certificate has no value. And that's what they get paid for. They get paid for the, this signature. Okay, so this is a, basically another view. And these names, you can see here, these names are standardized. Which standard define those names of fields of, of the CA, of the certificate? Thank you. It's X.509 standard. The, the format is standardized. Yes, please. Okay, issuer signature. Who produced the issuer signature? CA. The CA. Those are uh, okay. Those are private companies uh, that has been trusted. They have been there for a long time. I'm, I'm not familiar with the process of becoming CA. To become CA, I'm sure they go through very rigorous uh, creation process and trust process. Plus, it's it's already kind of saturated. It's very hard to come up with a new CA. There are well-established CAs that people trust. And how do we trust how, what is the, uh, uh, what are the mechanisms used so that all computing, 
all computers of the world and all browsers, all even mobile phones now trust the CS. What's the trick? Uh, so, Sorry? Uh, yes, very good. So basically, these CAs are well known by all the browsers and all the operating systems. In fact, uh, I think I have here the tool it's just to get the name. Yes, here is an example. In Windows, or in all browsers, just to save time and just to show you. Sorry. Search Manager. So if you go here and run Search Manager, Manage Computer Certificates. By the way, this is a fresh installation of Windows. I just installed it yesterday because my computer crashed. Uh, basically here, uh, where do you think the certificates, the CAs will be? In which folder do you think? In which of these? Trusted root certificates. These are the trust. These are the lucky ones. These are the trusted root CAs. Windows knows them. Uh, your Android knows them. Uh, browsers, Firefox, I, uh, Internet Explorer, Chrome, all of them, they know these certificate authorities. So, for example, go, uh, Global Sign. This is a very well known. Now, the certificates, of course, it lasts very long. They don't renew the certificates very often. Who do you think signed those certificates for them? Every certificate needs to be signed by CA. What about the CA? Who signs their certificates? Vendors. Sorry? The vendors, the, the, the makers. The no, not really. These are the top trusted entities on the web. Who trusts them? Who signs for them? They trust each other. Sorry? Very good. No, they just sign for themselves. You see here? This is the certification path. This is self-signed certificate. If you do, you can self-sign. If you do open SSL, you can create certificate and open sign it. Yes? But who will trust you? Nobody. Why? Because you are not in this list. Simple. Because you are not in this list. This list is a trusted list. These people, these companies went through very rigorous process to put their name here. And they basically, they're the root certificates of CAs, they are self-signed. They sign them by themselves. Yeah? Now, when the browser downloads the certificates, and this certificate happens to be from, uh, what's the company here? Global Sign. What the browser will do? It will take the digital signature associated with the certificates. It will decrypt it. How it will decrypt it? Using the public key of the CA. From where it will get the public key of the CA? F from this list. From this list of trusted root certificates. You see here, one of the fields will be public key. This is the public key of global sign. The public key of global sign is this one. So, if I, if I visit a website, and that website, they have purchased their digital certificates from global sign, so the browser will download the digital certificate of that website from the web server of that website. Then the browser will extract the digital signature from the digital certificate. <laughs> they will decrypt it using global sign public key. They don't need to go all the way to global sign and get the certificate. If they do that, global sign will become a bottleneck on the web because millions of visits and billions of visits, millions of websites, millions of users, we cannot go and every time get the public key of the public key of the CAs because it's a limited number of CAs. Browsers, operating systems, they already have this list. Yeah, is it clear? Okay. So let's move on. Uh, so this is what I mean. You, you know this format here. Uh, this this is version serial number. You know these field names are standard. Which standard it's used to define these field names? X.509 uh, standard. Okay. Okay, this is what I just uh, explained. So if you want to request a digital certificate, you can either do it online. You go to Global Sign. You go through a wizard there. 
you choose what type of certificates you want, uh, what's the validity, usually one year or two years. You cannot get more than two years. And you pay and you get your digital certificate. Uh, another way to do it, you can do it programmatically. Uh, you take your public key and you use a tool like OpenSSL and you create what is known as a certificate signing request. Uh, the certificate signing request will basically have some basic information about you, about the entity requesting the certificate, and the public key. Then you send it to the certificate authority. They will uh, verif do the verification, the signature. The, they, they will sign the certificate once, once they are happy that you are who you claim to be. And then they will give you a digital certificate. The format will be X09, X.509 certificate. You go ahead, you take it, you install it in your, in your web server, and then uh, people, when they visit your website, they will trust it. You get the green light, the green, uh, the green uh, lock uh, to give confidence uh, that to the visitors that your website is genuine. So here is the the green lock. Uh, here is the uh, the lock. This is a secure website. Let's have a look at the certificate. You can see here, QUF, uh, here is the, this certificate was issued to wildcard QU, QU domain. We see this uh, JetBrain. Yes, these guys went for a full certificate. So there are different level, different uh, kind of uh, qualities or different, uh, different certificates. Uh, the, the, the rigor, how rigorous is the process of verifying the identity of the, user, of, the, of the owner of the certificate. You can go for what is known as an extend, extended verification certificate, which will take a couple of days for them to really do thorough check that this is a really, this company is a really just brain. So when they give you the certificate, they give you an extended version where the browser will show you not only the name of the domain, or the, or the URL, they also show you the name of the company in front of the, of, the, of the address. Of course, most average user, they don't give a lot of importance to this. That's why most websites, are, they don't want to pay extra to get this. You need to pay extra to get this extra name in there. And if you, if you look here, when I look at the certificate, uh, you see here details, Ensure subject, and you get a lot more information here. Uh, this is the, the domain name, this is the company name, and so on. So just to highlight this, not, not super important. Most companies, as you can see, uh, are using normal certificates. Uh, so let me go back to my banner. Go back here, uh, view the certificate. So it was issued to uh, QU domain, star.qu.edu, and it was issued by DigiCert, and it is valid until 2020. Now, this certificate has been signed by whom? DigiCert. DigiCert. And DigiCert, it's known as a trusted root CA. Trusted root CA, and it will be definitely 100% listed in the list of the certificates recognized by Chrome and recognized by, uh, in this case, recognized by Chrome. Now, there is something very important to understand called the certification path. Have a look at this. So, this certificate was issued by this DigiCert SHA 2 Secure Server CA. And this, this server that issued the certificate is trusted by DigiCert. So there is something known as the trust chain, trust chain. Why are we doing, what does this mean? What does trust chain mean and why do we need it? Why can't we just have one this certificate authority, it issues all the certificates? Why do we have this chain? related to scalability. Is like instead, even if I am CA, I might have multiple servers issuing certificates. So to make it more scalable, I don't want to have one 
uh, one anti one let's say one component issuance certificates. I might have multiple, and then these these multiple servers, they are trusted by. I have one root. The root can only be one. The root is one, and that root kind of delegates issuance certificate to other servers, and those servers they have a certificate that is signed by the root, and this. What, what we what, what are often called subordinate CAs, they issue certificates. It's just for scalability purposes. So that's why in most cases you will find what you will find you will find a chain of trust, except for the tr for the root trusted CA. What is the what is the chain of trust? One. And the, who 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 is this uh, root the root by themselves self signed. The, the only trusted self-signed certificates are the certificates of the CA themselves. Uh, and this is what I showed you here. Like if I go to the path here, there is only one root, and the, the root is, is the CA themselves. Yeah? So that's basically the idea of chain of trust. So the trust chain, uh, we have the root CA, and we have intermediate CAs. And these intermediate CAs has been trusted by the root CA, and they can issue certificates. And we do this mainly for distributed trust model and for scalable trust model. Um, so the root CAs here, self-signed, and the owners of these certificates are very well known. Okay. So the, the root certificates, as I explained, they are well known. They are trusted by browsers, web servers, and mobile phones, and so on, smartphones. And then typically they have multiple servers. And these multiple servers, they have been trusted by the root trusted CA. And these, uh, these intermediate CAs can issue certificates. And that's basically uh, the chain of trust, the chain of trust. Okay, one more thing I explained, I just want to highlight it here. There is certificate revocation. This is very important. Uh, you know, the banking sector is very, very good in doing this. They know how to issue cards, like bank cards or, or credit cards, but they have a very good system for revoking such cards. If you lose them or you lost or they get stolen, you immediately can notify your bank using online banking or phone and they will immediately, what they will do, they will revoke it. So, even if you try, once, you, once it is cancelled, if you go and somebody has the, has the card and they go to Amazon and they try to make a payment, will the payment succeed? It will not succeed. Although the card, the, the card number is valid, the expiry date is valid, you know, the ID, the, the, the number behind the card, everything is valid, but the payments will, be, will fail. Why? Why is this? Because it is revoked. Basically, the bank maintains a list, or in this case, maybe MasterCard or Visa card, maintain a list of canceled cards. If the card you are using is one of those canceled lists, you cannot make payment using that card. Although the card is still looks valid and genuine. Same thing here. Like the certificate authority maintain a list, maintains a list of certificates, we call it, Certificate revocation list. And then the browser, whoever, they can go and ask the certificate authority, please tell me whether the certificate is still valid or it has been, it has been revoked. And uh, so that's basically the idea. And remember, every certificate has an identifier. You see here serial number? So every certificate has a serial number unique serial number, so you can easily check whether the certificate has been revoked or not revoked. So all, every CA has a URL where you can, where the browser can go and check. Okay. I think I already explained this. The, I will try, inshallah, I didn't have time, unfortunately, to prepare some nice demo of uh, practical tools showing you all this in a life, uh, life example. I will do my best to do so, uh, inshallah, next session. 
So in here, I just want to show you concrete usage of digital certificates. Uh, this is what's happened in your browser whenever you visit an HTTPS website. There's something that happens called TLS handshake. So when you go HTTPS uh, uh, colon slash slash and you put the URL, this handshake takes place. So the browser will, will send the, the browser in this case, the, the client in this case, the browser will send the hello message to the server. The server responds by sending a certificate. Um, yes, it's sending a certificate and it's, it is also sending an encryption key. Remember, uh, remember at the end of the day, if you recall, uh, in, in practical, in practice, when we, when you, when we are using, uh, when we are using, uh, in practice, when we are using asymmetric cryptography, if you remember, asymmetric cryptography is not used for encryption, as we discussed. Why, why is it not used for encryption? Because it is sometimes thousand times slower than the symmetric. So, we use it in practice. Encryption is used asymmetric cryptography, or in practice, uh, we use a hybrid system, which is combination of asymmetric and symmetric cryptography. So, what do we use symmetric cryptography, asymmetric cryptography for? Key exchange. Just the key exchange. So, this is exactly what's happening. The server is responding with the certificates. The server is responding with the certificates plus an encryption key. This is the symmetric encryption key. And what the browser will do, the browser will verify the digital signature, sorry, will verify the digital certificates. If the digital certificate is valid, it will say to the browser, yes, I'm happy to, to interact with you using the key that you have suggested. So that key, by, by the way, that key will be encrypted by the private key of the server, remember? Uh, the private key, and what the client will do, it will decrypt that key using the public key. And then they will, they have it now established shared key. Using this established shared key, they can do secure communication between the client and the server using symmetric cryptography. So, and this is just to show you where digital certificates fit in the picture. So digital certificates, uh, is a way for the browser. The only thing digital certificates allow the browser to do is to establish trust. Without digital certificates, the browser cannot trust the, the server. Because we, everything in the web is suspicious. Everything, everybody can claim whatever identity they wish. But we need some assurance that entities and websites are what they claim to be. And how we establish this trust, how we get this assurance, how we get this uh, when you visit some website is through the digital certificates. Yes? Uh, and, and this handshake that takes place. So this hopefully puts, uh, concludes how really cryptography is used in real world. It's a combination of asymmetric and symmetric key, uh, sorry, asymmetric cryptography to establish shared key, and then symmetric cryptography to exchange messages securely, plus a very, very important element, which is the digital certificate. What's the role of the digital certificate? Trust. To establish trust. Without trust, you cannot start doing any meaningful secure communication. So the digital certificates and the associated digital certificate is just one element of what is the big umbrella? Public key infrastructure. It has digital certificate, certificates and of course CAs and other elements. So the, the big umbrella is we have public key infrastructure that makes secure communication feasible on the web. They all do the same thing, certificates. It's just some of them are more trusted, have been longer, they are huge organizations, very well known, such as VeriSign. Um, so these are the, 
the top ones. You can see here Komodo, 41% of the market. Semantic, this is very big security company. Um, this one, 30% of the market, global side. And those little ones. So it depends. Like if you go for the well-established ones, big ones, you pay a bit more than the other ones. The other ones are, are also okay. Um, but those well established are, cost you a little bit more. But in terms of features, it's exactly the same. But when you've put in your, in your website, in some websites, if you, if you look carefully, sometimes they put um, secured using VeriSign. Uh, when you put these big names, uh, especially in your payment page, it gives a, a bit more confidence to, to your visitors. Versus if you put something like Dutch Telecom or Puyo Woodis, uh, nobody has heard of it. Yeah. Uh, compare this to Semantic or Global Science. You know, it's just a name. It's much heavier. That's but functionally, is ex they, are, they do exactly the same. They all trust. They all listed in the uh, in the CA route. The lucky ones, the trusted. Uh, this is the the best money-making machine, very simple job, just sign certificates and you get paid. And people will come to you every year to pay you to, to, to sign for them. That's all. So, and you maintain, what else you maintain? The list of revocations. People can come and ask you, is this certificate still, still genuine or has been revoked? So it's, a, it's quite a simple model, um, but these are the lucky ones. They, um, they managed to put their names in that list.